Now we all know that there is one singular daddy when it comes to retro motorcycles in India. But Honda have been trying to tap into that retro motorcycle market for a while now. And a couple of weeks ago, they came out with this, the Honda CB350, a no-nonsense retro motorcycle that is meant to take on that company that shall not be mentioned. How is it on the daily? I think it's time to take it for a spin and find out. It is safe to say that the Honda CB350 has taken a lot of inspiration from its direct competitor. But that's not a bad thing. It's a pretty good looking bike by itself, especially in this brown dune color. It also comes with quite a lot of chrome bits like this engine guard, which is an optional extra. Uh, the entire uh, pea shooter exhaust is again finished in chrome and you've got a little bit of brush steel in the front with the cover of the suspension and your handlebars are also finished in the same brush steel. However, the entire look of the bike is meant to have that 1950s, 60s style retro look and it definitely does that. Now, the engine casing is now black and in terms of power, it is the same block that you would get in the CB350 RS or the Highness. So it pushes out 21 PS of power and 30 Newton meters of torque. One thing that I really loved about the bike are the Ergos. Now the Classic is slightly cramped for me, but this is a little bit more stretched out. This in fact is 44 mm longer than the Highness. So you've got quite a lot of leverage. You're still sitting quite upright and your knees and your legs are in a 90 degree position, which is rather nice. However, you aren't very comfortable in terms of seating. The seat is a little soft, so it takes a uh, a little time to get used to it and if you're going on a long ride it could get a little difficult the rear pillion seat is slightly larger compared to the highness making it a bit more comfortable for the pillion but overall a comfortable bike now honda have tried to one up their competition in terms of tech so you get a slipper clutch you get traction control that is switchable dual channel abs and you also get a type c charger now it is rather rudimentary in terms of tech still, but the experience makes up for it. The engine is super refined. It's very smooth and it's not jerky at all. In fact, the gearbox, since it is only a five speed, it has really tall gears. And second and third gear are basically more than enough for any form of commute. I have been able to clock 80 kilometers an hour in third gear while the engine was not redlining. So it is a very, tall geared engine that lets you not shift a lot during traffic which is good and it's easier to ride essentially however i have an issue with the experience of the bike now the shifter on my left side is massive my foot i have a size 8 uk foot but between the rear and the front shifter i just cannot fit my foot so i cannot use the rear part of the shifter. I essentially need to use the shifter just like a normal one, one down, five up. I would love to use the rear bit of the shifter for comfort, but I cannot since my shoe is not big enough. That's the only issue I've got while riding the bike. And if it can be omitted, it can definitely be omitted because I can ride the bike completely normally with the front of the shifter. But otherwise, the bike is a really nice, comfortable bike to ride anywhere. Before we go any further, shout out to Honda Beguin Pune East for lending us this bike. If you want any of the premium selection of the Honda bikes like the CB350 lineup, CB300R, Africa Twin, etc., check out Beguin Pune East and get yourself an awesome Honda motorcycle. All of their details are mentioned below. a thumper engine you might expect a lean rough running weak engine but you will be caught by surprise the motor pulls strongly no matter what you throw at it the 30 nm peak torque is clearly spread and flat through the rev range allowing you to lug the motor in a higher gear if you want to listen to that lovely thump the gearing is tall 
letting you really pull the engine for what it's worth before slotting it into the next cog. Yet, the torque allows you to trundle along in the city without too much clutching. It really is a lovely motor. Talking about the clutch, it is pretty light too, making it rather effortless in stop and go traffic. The slipper clutch also does a decent job when it comes to slamming the gears down while dropping anchor, which brings me to the brakes. The 310mm disc at the front does a decent job in the stopping department, but it lacks feel under heavy braking. The rear 240mm disc, however, gives great feedback through the foot peg. That being said, the overall stopping power is more than sufficient even for spirited riding, as long as you can omit the lack of response from the front. The newfound 44mm of length in the CB350 hasn't made the bike difficult to shimmy around through tight spots either, making it a fairly practical, dailyable bit of kit. The CB350 feels planted and well settled when it comes to its suspension. The combination of telescopic forks and twin hydraulic shocks on a cradle frame chassis is a similar setup you would get in any of its competitors. But the CB350 is sprung on the slightly stiffer side. It is apparent while moving at low speeds over rough patches, but once you pick up the pace, the bike does a pretty decent job at ironing out the bumps. Overall, the CB350 feels planted and stable in the corners, which none of the competitors can match. But this, of course, comes at the cost of a slightly stiffer suspension. Talking about the price, the CB350 starts at Rs 199,900 X showroom for its DLX variant and Rs 2,18,000 X showroom for its DLX Pro variant making it ever so slightly cheaper than the starting price of 2 lakh 2000 rupees for the dual channel ABS model of the Royal Enfield Classic 350 making it a very good option to consider if you're in the market for a retro themed bike the CB350's block is not only refined but also frugal Honda claim it to be capable of achieving up to 46 kilometers to the liter real world numbers are closer to 33 kilometers per liter in the city and 37 kilometers per liter on the highways but mind you those are still some impressive numbers this specific motorcycle comes in this beautiful matte dune brown color adorned with a suite of optional extras like the front visor the chrome engine guard the fog lights and the pillion backrest it is my personal opinion that a lot of people choose products over other products just because of brand image and the name behind the product. So if you look at this Honda CB350, I think it is a better product than the Royal Enfields or the Classic 350 for that matter. But I would still think that a lot of people would pick up the Royal Enfield first because it is a Royal Enfield. However, if you want a better product, and you want a bike that performs nicer, is more refined and is a little bit more comfortable, I would pick the Honda CB350. Arguably, it is a little bit cheaper and it also performs a little bit nicer. So, it is the most sensible option in my opinion. Do let us know what is your thought on the new CB350 and does it put that last nail in the coffin against the classic 350? Do let us know down in the comments below. It's been your boy Bhavneet. I'll see you guys in the next one.